Well, welcome everybody. Uh, it's um, APSCO Germany, APSCO Deutschland uh, webinar. Um, I won't uh, spend too much time talking about that because Lisa Jones, who I'm sure is well known to many of you, uh, will take it forward. Uh, Lisa is, of course, from Barclay Jones. Uh, she will explain a bit more about the company and what they do if you don't know her. Um, the big topic uh, for the year um, is, and actually for last year and probably the year after next, will be how to get those candidates in Germany. Candidates in Germany is, is, has been and remains the biggest challenge of any recruitment company, company irrespective of uh, whether you're engaged in contracts recruitment, uh, perm or staff leasing. It's the big headache for us here. Uh, candidates hide behind data protection and uh, don't like being engaged with on Zing and LinkedIn. So uh, Lisa and I have had a discussion about you know, what, what, what are the other options and how can we use more creative and innovative ways to reach those all elusive candidates. But although you want to dive straight into that, I've got one or two uh, just quick updates from APSCO and I'll run through those. Um, first of all, uh, uh, Taylor Vessing, who support our legal helpline and also constructed all the standard template documents, are currently updating all of the template contracts that we have. That covers uh, recruitment, uh, sorry, uh, covers contracts recruitment, uh, the AUG staff leasing and permanence, so your terms and conditions, various other documents in there too. They haven't been updated for a while and Taylor Vessing are currently just bringing them completely up to date uh, with regards to any case law that's happened and new trends um, in the German legal system. Uh, they will be ready probably by mid-February uh, and as soon as they're ready, you should uh, be informed about that through email. And we will then launch a series of uh, webinars to run through how to use those template documents and then obviously field questions on them. That'd be a really good and interesting uh, session, I think. And we get a lot of requests on how to uh, interpret and understand and use best uh, those template documents on the legal helpline. So this will cover it all. Uh, once and for all and those as indeed this webinar will be hosted on our members area so if you miss something you go out for a cup of tea and you miss the, the really uh, crunch point you can come back and refer to uh, the entire webinar as an, an audio file on YouTube through a link on our uh, members area. Just a couple of uh, pointers uh, dates for your diary the next webinar will be on the 19th of February an interesting one uh, by um, a gentleman called Tim Mullen, who is the uh, CEO of a company called AudioSoft or Staff IT Pro. They recently gave a presentation at a meeting here and it was fascinating, um, all about uh, HR Tech AI and uh, their software is bespoke for the recruitment profession. So they'll be talking about that and their observations on the market and so forth, uh, artificial intelligence. Really interesting one. Um, the 23rd of April, uh, we're organizing a slightly different format meeting in Frankfurt. Uh, we're having a recruiter day. Uh, we're having a gentleman called Dininger uh, moderate the event. Uh, he is the gentleman that set up LinkedIn in Germany. Uh, there'll be five speakers and a higher than average or better quality than average lunch. Our lunches are usually good. This will be exceptionally good by all accounts. And uh, that will be a half day event straddling lunchtime. Now, that was my request. Um, and just so before I forget, at the end of this presentation, we're going to have a quick poll and uh, opportunity for you to give your feedback. Um, so we collect that, um, how you engage and your thoughts are always very interesting to us. So please uh, take a minute or two to tick the boxes on the poll and that will give us the feedback on how brilliant uh, you think Lisa Jones is. And with that, I'm going to hand over to Lisa, mute myself. We have the opportunity to ask questions uh, through your chat box. So if you have questions, please. Don't be shy. Uh, ask Lisa those questions and she'll respond. Well, hello, everybody. It's Lisa from Barclay Jones. Thanks, everyone, for attending today. So um, my command of the German language was restricted to the German exchange I went on near the Black Forest when I was 14, which is when Top Gun first came out. So that gives you an idea of my level of German. However, my command of the English language is pretty damn good. Obviously, if you remember Top Gun from the first time, you'll be just as excited 
as I am about number two that's coming out later on this year. Right, so thank you very much, everyone. So, and thank you for the fabulous introduction. So my name's Lisa Jones. I came out last year to, well, not literally, I came out to Germany last year um, on the invitation of AppsCo to deliver some content around how to use social media to market your business and generate sales. And today I've been asked um, what we can do to grab more candidates, more of the right candidates to make your processes more streamlined, to use your time more effectively. To position myself, I am a recruitment advocate. I have been in recruitment since 2000. My business specializes in working with recruiters. That's all we do. Um, and we do three things. We are very good at recruitment training. We've won awards for this, one of them being AppsCo. So if you want your staff or your teams to be more effective with Bullhorn, Adapt, inbound sales, job adverts, etc., please let me know. Equally, if you're worried about your technology not working or not delivering those key fees into your business, we can help with that. And what we also do is mentor and train recruitment marketeers of all levels to generate those very crucial passive candidates and clients. So today we're gonna to be very focused on what recruiters and their marketeers can do to generate passive talent attraction, to help you with more exclusivity, to help you spend your time more effectively, because as much as we are more technological than we have ever been, the one thing we still don't have is a time machine. So we're going to be looking at five things today. Your goals. I want to understand what it is you're trying to do right now. What do you want to fix in 2020? We also need to fully understand the candidate and recruiter experience because if we are going to improve the candidate experience and we need to, we probably need to improve the recruiter experience as well because the recruiter attrition rates, certainly in the UK, are extremely high. The level of leavers is at an all time high. That doesn't help with morale and it certainly doesn't help with candidate experience, which again is at an all time low as well. We need to clearly look at some ideas around in, um, engaging passive candidates. I'm also going to talk to you about what I consider to be the best tools to help you generate that extremely crucial phone and face time with your candidates. And I want you to think about and make a commitment as to what your action plan for 2020 is going to be. So let's move forward. One thing I do want to uh, take the opportunity to quickly tell you about is our new recruitment training platform. So some of the things I'm going to be talking to you about today are on the thing that you can see right in front of you. Um, I'll send you some information outside of this session on this new system, but it's we're very excited. It's going to enable us to train a lot more recruiters around the globe. It will be in different languages as well if needs be. We're focused on Adapt and Bullhorn right now and very soon inbound sales, candidate attraction, recruitment marketing, job adverts, etc. So keep your eyes peeled. HIT stands for High Intensity Interval Training. We are firmly of the belief that high intensity interval training should not be restricted to the gym and to exercise. It should be um, allowed to be within the recruitment workspace and help recruiters really use small pockets of time to change and improve. And that's what this system is all about. And today, I suppose, is a hit. We're going to be looking at how to improve your candidate, um, your passive candidate engagement. So what I'd like you to do, please, is pop into your chat facility and tell me what specific issues within your recruitment business or at your recruitment desk would you like to fix in 2020? What's important to you? What would you like to say to me this time next year? Lisa, I fixed dot, dot, dot. Pop your information into the chat and let me know what you'd like to fix. I'm not gonna be reading all of these out, but I'm just doing a little bit of research for myself. So some of my clients often say, I need to decrease um, my staff attrition. I need my staff to stay longer. I want to improve the return on investment I receive from the systems that are costing me a lot of money. I want to speed up my time to hire. I want to retain more clients. I want to reduce the spend on job boards. I want to improve my recruiter success rates and recruiter happiness. 
So pop all of that stuff in and Pos will share that with me outside of the session. The next question I'm really interested in, again, interested in knowing what's going on in the space out there, is which recruitment software do you use? So it might be Firefish, Bullhorn, it might be Access or RDB, it might be Adapt or any of the above or anything that I've not mentioned. Please pop that into your chat facility because, again, what we're interested in is what systems you're using. And the reason for this is going to be explored further on in the session that we're running today because I do believe the best way of attracting passives and engaging and working and making money from passives be they candidates or clients is through the only system that you own which is your crm system so i'm very interested in the technology that you are housing all of your data on now i feel very strongly that people that recruitment is a people game we kind of know this but certainly over the years, it's become more of a technology game. It's become less about talking to people and more about messaging them. It's become less about working with people and more about placing them. And that's caused us a problem. It's increased or decreased client sat candidate satisfaction and they are your clients. It's increased the volume of communications we're sending that are not responded to. So that's something to think about. But I like my client, my candidates, my clients, et cetera, to think about the four C's. And if you want to translate these into German and send them to me, <laughs> I will be very happy. But candidates, clients, colleagues, and cash. So the candidates that you're trying to place and replace, the clients that you would like to invoice, the colleagues that you want to attract into your own personal business and stay for longer than a year or two years and ultimately the money that you are going to make from this entire process. The stats are not positive. 60% of candidates are having a poor experience of recruiters right now. This is not a stat you can put on your website. 40% of the candidates you work with will be happy, the other 60% are not loyal. One of the goals for this webinar is to give you ideas on how you can improve the candidate experience but in order to improve it, you need to know what it is right now. Now, this is a generic stat, a generic global stat. You have to ask yourself as a business, what are you doing to measure this within your own recruitment firm so that you can start managing what you're measuring? Often, the recruiters that I work with when I start working with them are not measuring this. They dare not. And as a result, they're not really aware of what's going on and they forgive themselves for the poor experience because they're overworked. In the UK, and again, educate me about the German market, please. 80% of the UK's placements are made by 8% of recruiters, which is not a great stat. 80% of the sales are made by 8% of recruiters. Not a great stat. And equally, when we look at all of this, it all adds up to recruiters quitting. Not great. Not a great industry to want to work in. And when you look at those three stats, my candidates are unhappy, I'm, it's difficult to sell, I'll quit. It's not great. One of the challenges, as I said at the beginning of this webinar, is it's a time game. We don't have any more time. When I started in recruitment in 2000, our working hours were very different to what they are now. Our working hours were, we have got in at 7 a.m., maybe, and if we were lucky, we left at 7 p.m. Now, with wellness and mental health and theoretically technology making our jobs easier, we feel we don't need to spend as much time. Equally, we're potentially not as money hungry as we were, so we're not going to be spending as much time in the office. We also assume that there's lots of things that we need to do that maybe we shouldn't be doing. And because it's a time game, we're probably wasting a lot of time. The stats, again, are not great. We're spending a third of our week sourcing for one job. Now, you're on this webinar today to understand how to attract, engage, and get loyalty from passive candidates so that you can reduce that one third of your week. Even if you could reduce that one third to one sixth, you're generating five to seven to eight hours a week that you could then do and use to engage those passive candidates so that they do apply for your roles if indeed you need to advertise them. We are addicted to communications. We're checking our emails 36 times an hour. We're interrupted 47, uh, 56 times a day with stuff that we don't need to do. 
and we are checking our mobile phones 47 times a day. I suspect that number's a lot higher for some people, certainly it is for me, that might be every minute, but that's something for you to think about. The stat that blows my mind every time I look at it is the majority of candidates placed last year you already had. They were already on your systems. They'd already applied for jobs. You may have even already spoken to them, but you have no process for continuously and effectively engaging with them. So one case study, we have a client who's an engineering recruiter. They uh, managed to make a placement. Great. When they were looking at the source of that placement, the managing director said, hold on, this John guy, I've known him for ages. Let me just check. And he was on their ADAPT system and had been on their ADAPT system when the vacancy came up and continued to be on our ADAPT system whilst they spent six weeks sourcing from alternative systems. That's six weeks worth of time wasted. And then you look at that over the year, that potentially, if they hadn't spent that six weeks, could improve their, their pipeline and their turnover in, incrementally. It could have got another six or seven placements in that time something to think about. And this is why I was saying to you at the beginning, what CRM system you're using, because you engaging with that more effectively is the ultimate tip. So we're talking about engaging with passive candidates. We're saying, if they're not looking for work, and I am uh, struggling to speak to people who I need to convince, the only people I'm able to get on the phone are candidates that are speaking to every other recruiter. Lisa, what can I do about this? So I've got some high level tips and we could spend all day just on this one topic, but I'm gonna give you some high level tips. We've got to think about processes and routines. We know when we follow a tried and tested workflow, it's effective. It's when we try to become too creative. In other words, too much data, not enough candidates. Too many jobs, not enough placements. Too many clients, not enough invoices. We have to stick to a process. Often I do work with recruiters that have far too many things to do and they're missing on the basics. The reason for this, I feel in my time in recruitment is that recruitment seems to have become a very painful industry to work in. There's more tech than we've ever had access to, definitely more data. Recruiters suffer from a fear of missing out. And that means they spend too much time online looking for perfect candidates when they may already have them. We've also got less time in than ever because we work less hours and we've definitely got less process. But at the same time, the recruitment leaders in the room will know that they're having to drastically improve the working environment of their staff in order to re uh, retain them within the business. But margins are lower fees are lower and retention is an all-time low. But then we hear about automated or artificial intelligence and automation and we hear that there's technology that will help us attract the passives, that will help us convert them and keep them online and we're going to talk about that because 70% of recruiters we've polled says, Lisa, I have no time, I have all of these things that I need to do, take the pain away, automate my job, but don't take it from me, don't turn me into a robot. So we'll talk about what we can do to speed up your process a little so you have more time to do those all important things. Because if you continue to spend a third of your day sourcing for candidates, you'll have almost no time left to convert them and keep them because you've still got to sell and you've still got to have your lunch. One thing that we have to fixate on and the thing that will never, I feel, be changed or it might be adapted, but certainly not taken from us, is the ability to meet and speak. We may be able to do it via video. Great, I'm doing a webinar for you now. We may be able to send texts and WhatsApp messages and all of that stuff, but ultimately, deals are more likely to be struck with phone and FaceTime, smiling and dialing. However, the stats are not in our favor because we seem to have no time to pick up the phone, but the stats are very interesting. Here's some stats for you. And they can apply, I know this is not a sales webinar, this is a sourcing webinar, but it's the same thing. If 50% of the candidates that contact you 
if you so if you respond to them first you are most likely to be working with them but interestingly as recruiters we take too long to get back so who's calling them first if it's not you the challenge is that when we do call them back a lot of our calls go straight through to voicemail and a vast majority of those voicemails are never returned which means we give up too early look we have to make six calls before we can convert that person. But how many of your recruiters are quitting on call two or call three? The main reason I suspect they're quitting is a lack of time and a lack of process. So we need to look at what we're doing right now and ask ourselves, are we spending too much time on the wrong parts of the recruitment process? The other thing we have to ask ourselves is that when we're contacting a candidate, we have to ask ourselves, what are we offering them? Now, there's a terminology which you may or may not have heard, with them, what's in it for me, and please translate that into German if you need to do that. But ultimately, if you are contacting a candidate via Zing or LinkedIn or via Pigeon or via Blimp or via phone, and you are heading straight into a conversation about a new vacancy that you've got, that's not gonna work with passive talent attraction. They don't think they need a new job. 85% of the online market thinks they're okay with their current role. So you have to ask yourself what content is available to you that you can use to help them see that regular conversations with you are important. Do you know if they have a dog? Crazy question, but people who have dogs really care about that stuff. Do you know why they're in that sector? Do you know the typical challenges of that sector? Do you know what's going to happen to that sector in five to ten years time? Do you know what's happened to that sector in the last five to ten years? Could you send that content to candidates that you want to speak to. Give them something they wouldn't have found for themselves. It takes seconds every day. But because we're working so much data, we tell ourselves we don't have time to do this. But it is absolutely crucial. If I ran this webinar simply about how to use social media, I'm not sure you'd be on it. But I'm running a webinar about recruiters that are suffering from a candidate shortage, they are finding it difficult to deliver their fees. They are wasting time on the wrong stuff. And as a result, I have some tips that are gonna help them. This is called persona-led content. Think about what you could do much quicker than a webinar that will allow you to say to your ideal candidates, I get you, I understand you. Here's some stuff for you to look at, give me a call. You think you might need more people. I'm convinced that you probably do not. You do need more time and you do need more process. You definitely don't need any more data. There is plenty of data out there. So what you need to do is improve your candidate experience and the process that you use for engaging with those candidates. The terminology CRM first is something that is a mantra for my business. I want to know though, how many candidates can you actively work at once? Is it 10? Is it 100? Is it 1,000? Could you please put that into your chat facility? Just put the number of candidates you genuinely think you can actively work at any one time. I'm asking this question because often we're finding that recruiters are working too much data, which makes them um, less likely to call it, less likely to get results from it and be able to communicate effectively with it. Could you also outline in your chat facility, maybe tell me how is your marketing department helping you? What are they doing to help you keep your passive candidate alerted to you? Now, this is a model that I've created to help recruiters understand the state of their data. It's a mountain of data. They have huge amounts of data. And when you look at emails, job adverts, any applications that you've received, 
your CRM system, LinkedIn, Zing, any other online platforms that you've got. It is a mountain of data. And often what happens is we try to work all of it. And at the same time, we say, we don't have enough. I need more. I want you to focus on yesterday's data, level two. And ask yourself, what are you doing to retain that data? Clients that you've invoiced, candidates that you've placed. What are your routines for keeping those people engaged? How are you working with candidates that you've placed to generate passive candidates? Who are they meeting in their new jobs? Who have they left behind in their old roles? Which clients could you speak to from maybe that maybe used to work in other businesses that could recommend you to other candidates, again, to strengthen those relationships? You may want to get your marketeers to help you with level three. So candidates that maybe applied for jobs in the past or got to interview stage, but nothing really happened. But don't get too muddled in that space. Think about moving yourself back up to level two and working that much smaller batch of data. Think about your routines every single day. What are you doing to generate warmth? What are you doing to get them to look at you? What are you doing to get them to trust you? This isn't a big, long-winded process. This could simply be 10 minutes a day. Again, think of high-intensity interval training. If you went to the gym this morning, you would focus on a muscle group for a short period of time to really build up and do small steps. So think about your daily or LinkedIn Zing persona-led updates. So if you specialize in pharmaceuticals or food and beverage or engineering, what content are you reading every morning in a couple of seconds that you can push out and say, the engineers in my network will find this really useful? How could you also share that kind of content via the connection updates that you send? So rather than saying, I'm a recruiter, I want your CV, which is what a candidate will read when they receive your update, Say, I noticed that we are in the same sector. I thought you might find this survey that I've seen about engineering salaries of use. Regularly check your notifications. What are they telling you? Has someone moved jobs? Has someone changed, uh, had a promotion? Has someone left the industry? And a very, very cool tip is your awards process. As a recruiter, are you aware of the awards in your sector? And I'm not talking recruitment, I'm talking of the sector that you have a niche in. So if you're an engineering recruiter, which engineering awards are happening throughout the year that your candidates and clients are likely to be fixated on? Again, it's something about them. Persona-led updates is about them, not you. You have to ask yourself on a daily basis for five to 10 minutes a day, what routine could you deliver five to 10 minutes a day to get them to look at your profile and give you an excuse to call them. That's something to really think about. Often I speak to recruiters who don't know where to start. Where do, who do I ring? I've got all of this data, where do I start? You start with the ones that are looking at you back, a little bit like dating. It is about routine. It is about engaging passives. It is about understanding who those passives might be. I am sure you're all fantastic at searching, but it's engaging. That's the thing that often we spend too much time sourcing a third of our week and not enough time engaging with candidates. So we need to think about some quick tips now to save you time and to get those candidates to maybe call you in the very least. Now, as I've already said, your CRM, your computer, or your, sorry, your, your client relationship, your candidate relationship management system, Bullhorn, Adapt, et cetera, is the most important system you have access to. But what we are finding is that the majority of the clients, when we start working with them, are using that as a data dump. They are sourcing most of their candidates from outside of their system, maybe from Zing or LinkedIn or job adverts. This is a challenge because you're sourcing from the same places as your clients and your competitors. Not helpful. As we've said, you're probably sourcing candidates that you already have. 13 hours a week spent wasting time. 
This is normally because when you've put the data on your CRM, you've not spent time coding it correctly. Maybe you only clean up the data when you get to invoice stage. That's too late. Then what we do as an industry is we buy more equipment, more software, more data, because we've not actually cleaned as we've gone. It's a bit like buying a house and not cleaning it and just keep building room after room after room and not cleaning up what we've already got and then getting lost. For me, one thing that has to happen in 2020 is recruitment consultants need to be targeted on data hygiene, data cleanliness, effective CRM usage, getting that 80% down bit by bit by bit, even if you finished on 70% this year, that's a massive increase in fees generated from the systems that you've got and the data that you've got and hopefully a, uh, an improvement of speed and placements. So you need to think about how to put your CRM first and it tends to start with training. How can you source from your system more effectively? How can you contact candidates using your system? How can you spot if they're looking back at you using your system? Because we are wasting too much time outside of the system, way too much. That's my little baby dog. The other thing I really want you to think about is once you've cleaned up your data, and again, if you have a million records, don't clean them all up. Clean up small pockets of data. I asked you um, earlier in the webinar, how many candidates do you genuinely think you can work? I asked you earlier in the webinar, you know, what are you doing with that level three and that level two? Could you automate some of the things that you are doing to make those level three candidates move up to place candidates, because that's what we want to happen. There are some fantastic systems out there. Candidate ID is one. Peerfish is another. Woo is another, where you can send regular content out to your passive database, and those candidates' engagement is recorded, and you are notified so you know who is actually on the market, even if they're not looking like they are from the LinkedIn profile, even if they're not returning your calls, you'll be able to see that they're looking back at you and you can then make a decision about contacting them, which we'll look at in a second. Please put in Candidate ID or Herefish or Woo if you're using those systems at the moment. Again, I'll look at this outside of the webinar, but I'm really interested to see what people are doing. They're fantastic bits of kit. Now, what I want you to imagine is that you've been working on your small pockets of data. You've refined your list. You now need to contact them. Now, one little cute hack is Loom. Loom is a fantastic free piece of software. It will record your screen with you in the corner. That's me, by the way. And I say to you, this is a very cool tip to improve candidate engagement. You go onto their LinkedIn profile, freely available. You press the Loom button, which will allow you to record you talking to them about them. They will receive a link to your video you will know if they've opened that link as you will get an email from Loom. They will click on the link and see themselves and immediately are engaged. Remember, what's in it for me? My name is Wayne Barclay and I receive a video and I see my own face. I'm transfixed. What is this recruiter doing? Why are they doing this? What are they talking about? And all of a sudden, I'm in your video, watching myself, listening to you say, hi Wayne, um, I noticed that you're an engineer in Dusseldorf. I'm really keen to have a chat with you, mainly because I've got an event happening soon, which I'd love you to attend. But if you can't do that, could we have a quick chat on the phone? I'd love to find out a little bit more about you or what other language you're capable of, of delivering or what other content you think is relevant. Flip this around, ladies and gentlemen. If you are into business development, you could bring the job vacancy from the client's website up and record the fact that you have candidates right now that can do it. So Loom is a fantastic piece of software to help you show the candidate um, who you are and who they are. Please put Loom into your chat facility if you're going to give Loom a try. It's really effective and it's free. 
Something else that's really effective and free is call scheduling software. This is around the candidate really taking control or feeling like they're in control. We're trying to improve their experience of you and also to automate your process so you have more time to deliver a valuable experience. So Wayne, I've seen you are on LinkedIn. I've noticed that you currently work at Barclay Jones. I'd love to have a chat with you. I've got, so I've got an event that I think that you would be great to attend, or I've got a client that would love to speak to you about your experience of X. Please press my Calendly link and book, book the best time for me to call you. Wayne is totally in control. You'll be able to see when he's clicked on your loom. If he doesn't book a call, you can still follow up. If he does book a call, you'll receive an email and your diary will be booked. The candidate will feel like they're in control. It may be 10 o'clock in the evening, but they are totally in control of the relationship they have with you, which in itself is very, very important to improve their experience. Often candidates feel that they're out of control. Their CV is being looked at without their permission. They're being contacted by lots of recruiters who don't understand them. So really think about how you can improve the experience with simple hacks like a Loom video, content that you send through LinkedIn invitations to wake them up about the sector and your expertise, not just jobs, and then how you're going to get them to call you. But at least if you send them a Loom video, you'll be able to see them looking back at your LinkedIn profile, you'll be able to see them looking at the link video at the Loom video and what time they did that. So yes, pop Loom and Calendly into your chat facility if you think you're going to give that a try. But the biggest, most effective tool in your, in your toolkit is you. It's you and how you work the process. It's you and how well-trained you are at delivering your recruitment life cycle. It's you and how clean your data is. But the challenge that we have again is recruiters are, their experience is poor, their attrition rates are very high, it's not good. We're finding that recruiters are spending not enough time being trained and too much time quitting. We equally find that the new generation of recruiters, in fact, more than 50% of them are either millennials or Generation Z. And they want more online, they want more automation, and they want more training to become effective in their roles. We've already mentioned recruitment hit, but have a think about how you can use things like this to speed up your process. But what I want to hear from you is, what's your 2020 action plan? What are you going to do? And pop this into your chat facility and I'll have a look at it outside of the session. But what is it that you are going to do to improve the candidate and recruiter experience? To think about how you're going to engage passive talent more effectively? To think about what systems and technology you can use to improve the entire process. Pop in your chat facility how you're going to achieve your goals this year. What new methods you're going to try and potentially what old methods you're going to stop. Think about how you can speed up your time to placement, how you can generate more warm calls. And drop me a line if you'd like any more tips. Now, pause. that's the end of the webinar. Have any questions come through that I need to answer? Hi, Lisa, it's Tremaine here. We've got a lot of Hello. no people replying. Uh, I can't see any questions on there. No, that's absolutely fine. Thank no, you very no. much, everyone. Now, I know that you're running a poll as well, aren't you, Tremaine? So before everybody dials off, get your mice ready because um, Tremaine's going to turn on a poll. It's just popped up now. Take a few seconds to answer the question in front of you. Excellent, thanks very much, Lisa. Fantastic uh, webinar, covered a lot. Uh, spoke quickly, so we got uh, uh, the finish ahead of time, which is great, we can be more productive now. I've already looked at Loom, and I've written lots yes. of notes, so uh, we'll be uh, exploring how that all works, being a slightly older generation person. It'll take no, a bit. you can't say that, you can't <laughs> say that. <laughs> It's not uh, about age, it's about experience. There we go. Uh, <laughs> thanks, thanks very much for really fascinating. Don't forget, uh, a video audio um, copy of this will go onto the members website, uh, the members area, which you activate 
by the on the top right hand corner of the absco.de website thanks very much for dialing in uh, thanks for your time thank you uh, lisa for a very uh, inspiring uh, webinar we look forward You're to more welcome. in the have a great day everyone have a great one bye bye bye